Hello viewers, well thanks for following me so far with my classic cameras. Today we're going to look at three British made Ensign cell fixes. The British made Ensign cell fix made by Ross Ensign Limited of, uh, near London, that was one of the first good cameras I ever got. I got the 16 on Mark 12, uh, Mark 2. But first of all, we'll show you the oldest one I have which is the one given by my auntie Dora here and this is the Selfix 420 it takes 120 roll film and it takes um, two sizes on 120 roll film funnily enough it has an NSAR lens which is a three element design it has a British made Epsilon shutter and then you have to be a big, bit careful with these epsilon shutters otherwise you can jam them up you set the shutter with the spring here and you press the shutter release here and that says half a second but it hasn't been used for a long time so it's more like one second you can see the little lever moving as I press it to set the shutter it's not flash synchronized because this is so old wasn't flash synchronized it has front cell focusing and you line it up at the distance you want against this little post here so that says 25 feet now it's in feet it wasn't in meters only because it's British you see you don't have meters and if it's British may do then it, you, you move your aperture lever on the top here and then you can it's rather fiddly but you line up an aperture against a little a little um, lever here so it says um it says 5.6 now this is a socket for a cable release remember there's no socket for a flash synchronization because it wasn't flash synchronized this is a viewfinder device you peer into this bit here and the view goes into a little lens there and reflect it up with a mirror and you can see what you're getting there you can turn it vertically that way if you want now there's the other viewfinder here which is what we call a direct vision viewfinder we pop that up if we can with this little lever that's a bit stuck oh yeah I've got it oh there we are and then you look through the rear and you line it up with the large frame in the front what you're hopefully going to get it's a bit hit and miss on the rear you can see two windows you've got this one is for 12 exposures and that window is for eight exposures and you you look through the numbers of the film here now how do you get 12 and how do you get eight well inside this camera there's a little flap and you pull the flaps over and now that is on 12 exposures because it's square so you use the middle window if you want 8 exposures you put the flaps back and then you get a much bigger frame but you only get 8 exposures on the film take standard 120 film and you have to guess the settings on it or use an exposure meter the next one is a 1220 which is takes as its name suggests takes 12 shots only and this time we have a 75 millimeter Ross Express lens which is four elements you've got the same epsilon shutter this time it's speed is 300 to one second whereas the, uh, the larger one, the 420, only went to 1 50th. This has got 300th. It's got front cell focusing again. And you line it up against the little index here, the distance that you want. So that is, says, um, there we are, that says 18 feet away. Again, it's only in feet. You set the shutter in the normal way by pulling that down. Now on this one I jammed the shutter and for some years I couldn't use it. I had to play around to try and free it up. It doesn't work very well. 
This time there's a cable release socket, but also the Epsilon flash socket, which is nowhere near the same as the normal Compure 3mm coaxial socket. It's a British flash plug, which doesn't fit anything else. So that wasn't very good. You had to get an adapter. The viewfinder this time is the Albarda viewfinder. I mean, if I can't remember how you put up oh, here. This has got a little lens in it this time. A lens there, and there's a lens at the front. And then you line up your subject here through their threat lens. You've got a winding mechanism for winding your film. And this one just reminds you a depth of field indicator. You can you can calculate the sharpness of um, depth of field by lining up the distance and reading off an aperture against the back. Here we are. This is the film load in here. It takes square pictures, of course. It, you load the film and you turn the film, wind it on here. I'll see if I can quickly load what my film and see if we can show you pull it out here this is rather hard to load there we are let's go let's go to go in there we pull it over put it into find the little slot mind the backing paper now this film has been used so much as a demonstration film it's, it's um oh there we are press as usual with your thumb to make it tight with all these roll film camera you must press with your thumb to make it tight and you keep winding and you keep looking through the little window on the back here and you watch the numbers come so that is eight exposure that's 12 that's 16 exposures so we're going to use the middle one look there's number one so you wind on till number one appears in the window there then when you want number two you wind it through until number Number two is in the window, and so on. You wind it. That's how the film winds on. You, this is for eight exposures here, and that is for my next camera, the 16 on Ensign Selfix, which is this one here. I've done some really good pictures with these 16 on ones. Unfortunately, I've got no prints to show you from the 12 and the other one, only prints from, from this one. This takes 16 frames. It has an epsilon shutter the same. Front cell focusing the same. It goes from 300 to one second. You set the shutter, fire it off. And this time it also got flash synchronizing here with the British system. And this time, we will open it up to show you. There's the frame for 16 on. It's a vertical frame. So m most of the time you are taking vertical photographs. If you want to take landscape shape pictures, you, you've got a viewfinder here, you hold the camera that way. So to get a landscape one, otherwise everything you take is, is upright, like portrait shape. Now quickly I'll show you a few actual pictures taken with the ensign cell fixes. The first one I'm going to show is my, my very first prize winner, which I've had. It was in the London Evening Standard newspaper, taken on FP3 film with a 16 on Ensign Selfix. This is the Model 2 that I had with a Ross Express lens, and I sold it years ago to a camera club friend. But that was one of my first successes you can see a peanut being thrown into the mouth where it's there so it's, it's there i think with peanut now this these ones are I'm going to show you now these are taken with that little one i just showed you with the ensar lens amazingly sharp lens that's in scotland and here's another one in scotland this is on oro film which i've processed and printed myself and that's in um, from Oban, looking across to the island. Oro film, um, 
before that I took we went to the island of Mull and I had some Ilford Delta film loaded and that was one with Ilford Delta film and it, it won me a prize I won a trophy landscape trophy with the little lighthouse here the red filters made all the clouds stand that well I've done a 20 by 16 inch print of that won me lots of prizes when I first got it I did some sort of tests and I did some tests around our house various pictures here to show you these are all these are all tests which I printed up quickly and then um, there we are there's a few taken and printed up from the 16 on now this sharpness is very good you only have to stop it down a little bit and all the bricks are resolved of course they're hand held at a 300th of a second but this one was on a tripod in my boys room and it was a time exposure with the room light and that was on a tripod at four and a half feet away and it stopped down to f22 to see how sharp it was with the dolly and this is our bay tree center in brentwood essex the sharpness around here is extremely good that is from the ensign selfix with the ensign lens well if you want to see some more results i'll give you a link to my Flickr page and then you'll see be able to see some more results on there but hope you've enjoyed this quick excursion into actually british made cameras thanks for watching folks